who did this guy play again? Because I don't remember who Jim can be the latest, but he sounds pretty crazy in this video. I don't go to uh, the devil to play the devil. I think make, many actors make that mistake. Go to God to tell you who the devil is. That's Go to a fictional being to tell you who a fictional being is. That makes no sense whatsoever. What I do, and it also gives me a protection. What's the um, difference? What's the difference, Jim? Like, because that also bears on how you protect yourself from such things. Um, the how do you protect yourself from a fictional being? It, like, what? Do you create an imaginary force field or something? Because, like, the devil doesn't exist. Different, the, uh, and are you saying um, the difference in the, the difference is, is that I, I play the truth. So if you go and play, go to the devil to play the devil, the devil will deceive you and put something up there that uh, deceives the public. He'll always try to hide in the shadow. He'll always try, because he doesn't like the light, even though he's called the light, the illuminator. Um, the, like, honestly, though, like, does this guy honestly believe, like, actors are, like, talking to the devil in order to, like, become actors or something? This dude is crazy. Uh, Lucifer. Um, and he tries to mimic God. He tries to be like God. So there's always, like, um, the, if God has love and what we see as love, he m creates lust. He's always trying to be like that. It's like uh, Cain trying to rip off Abel, cutting the corners. And um, so committing to... There's, well, there's a tendency, even in Milton's, uh, in, in, in Milton's Paradise Lost, there's been two readings of that forever. And one of them is that Milton's Satan is... Um, an, an anti-hero of the most profound sort, really the embodiment of evil. And the other reading is that um, Milton Satan is a, a disguised hero and the eternal, what would you say, the eternal rebel against established order and someone to emulate in consequence and that Milton somehow knew that. And Milton knew, knew Chuck because no gods exist. This would be like asking or claiming that, like, you know, like Bath, the Egyptian god, it's like cats exist or Ra exist or Zeus or Thor. Like, none of those beings exist. The Green Man, Santa Claus, Gooseberry, it's all just fictional creations created by people in their imaginations. Was coding that, not precisely secretly, but subtly. And I think that's a huge mistake. I mean, I've familiarized myself with Paradise Lost, and I think that Milton was an extraordinarily subtle writer and that he got everything as right as anyone ever has. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because, so this is, okay, this is a complicated thing to untangle, but one of the things you see in Hollywood portrayals of villains, you saw this in The Silence of the Lambs. You and it's, it's just kind of funny how, like, Jordan Peterson went from, like, Oh, the Christian God is just like a concept. I don't believe in him. I just use it as a, you know, philosophical tool to being like, uh, Satan exists, you know, evil is afoot. How do we you fight against Satan and protect yourself? And what do you do when Satan is speaking in your mind and blah, blah, blah? You see it frequently in mafia portrayals is that the villain is inadvertently or even sometimes purposefully glorified. And it's partly because he's a rule breaker and, and has the attraction that goes along with that. But I also wonder too, if it's it has something to do with what you were describing is that the writers and the actors find themselves when they're trying to portray evil, pulled towards falseness in that representation as part of the proclivity of evil to hide itself. and. I mean, evil is just what people consider to be bad. Uh, back in the past, it was considered evil to, for, you know, women to show their ankles and stuff. Nowadays, it's not considered evil to do that. Uh, and the Bible is considered evil for 
women to being on virgins before they marry. Nowadays, it's not. The danger in that is twofold, and one is the danger of deceiving the public as to the true nature of evil, because there's nothing heroic about it, quite the contrary. And the second danger I wonder about, you know, there's all this speculation about Heath Ledger and the consequences that for him of having played the Joker in such a dark manner. And, you know, I don't know what to make of that, although I do think there is some danger in having to journey down a path of emulating evil in order to represent it. Now, you uh, Heath Ledger was probably just a really depressed person and possibly playing the Joker just worsened his depress his depression. It's not that, you know, him playing a Joker um, made him, like, evil and he decided to commit suicide or something. You said that you turned to God, so to speak, to protect yourself against false representations of evil, but also in some ways to shield yourself. And it sounds to me reminiscent of what Tim's uh, superiors mentioned to him when they said to him that his faith might protect him I from, love his question. from what was... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if you believe that there is a evil being and a good being, yeah, believing that that good being is protecting you from that evil being, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess your faith is going to protect you, but that's just symptoms of paranoia and paranoia, and you need a bit of therapy, because the universe isn't out to get you, and the universe isn't out to help you. Yeah, man. This is the best interview I've ever had in my life. I love your line of questioning and um, getting to what, what is real. My job... Uh, getting to what is real. That is hilarious. Because all they've been talking about is mythological constructions that do not exist. The Christian God exists as much as talking donkeys, dragons, um, magic, spells, witches, uh, any kind of gods like Zeus or Bast or Ra or Odin, uh, Thor, Pluto, Hades, all of those are just constructs created by people. Is to give what I know to be absolutely certain and real. I hooked into Tim has a childlike quality to him. And I stay with that innocence. And that, and don't take that innocence as weakness. Or, uh, and um, so when I read the scripture, I, I feel truth, good, evil, and I find the good. And let that just pierce the darkness. And it has to pierce. And I know what that light is. And I know that deception that, that when I start hearing about for example, in, in your life, when you th there's two masters here. One is from the evil, wicked side, but it comes in through your ego. And the other one is the light side that tells you might, what you might not want to hear, but you ought to hear. And it's not manipulative. You hear that, people? Your ego is evil. Don't listen to your ego or yourself or whatever, because that is pretty evil. Tiff. It's truth. So I, f I go to that side, then I pray, then I go through it. Like the Passion of the Christ, I looked at the Shroud of Turin, and there were two men, Christian Tinsley and Keith Vanderlyn, who are experts in makeup. And the first, both of these men were agnostic, and they looked at the Shroud that Mel Gibson presented to them, and one... Wow, Mel Gibson, the notorious... Uh, anti-Semitic racist dude who went on a tirade because he got drunk and stopped by the cops and blamed uh, the cops stopping him on the Jews. Yeah, let's listen to that dude. Particular way, the way it is uh, through the negative, however they were able to show it, you can see the track lines of Jesus. You can see the, the, the actual um, bamboo sticks that they used. To, to initially hit him, and then you see the cat of nine tails. That Wait, they used 
Bamboo to to beat him. Because where does it say that? In the Bible. Are you biking up stuff? Where do they find Bamboo? Where Jesus supposedly lived. The track lines, they look like the Grand Canyon in your skin. And it shocked them. Now these guys look at everything from decapitations, murders, and everything. Prior to this, I did a movie a long time ago in New York, and I was with Homicide, and I got to see uh, the contortion of a face when someone gets murdered, and it's hard to watch. But when you start going into this, which is children, there is something that I can't even fathom, even with the protection of Almighty God, because it took me two years to get over this. Two years, and a friend of mine, Debbie, came. Yeah, it is honestly pretty traumatic to see people dying or dead. And to force yourself to do that, yeah, that's going to cause you some problems. It's not Satan doing it, and it's not God that is helping you. Came into the room, and at around 3 o'clock in the middle of the night, she, I was in a chair, and she heard me just weeping. Now, I would go into these black holes, and I have no idea. I don't remember it, but this was all of the screaming that I had to hear. I didn't want to hear it, but I had to hear it. And then I was able to transform that into the movie that you just saw when I took asked Alejandro Monteverdi. Okay, so it sounds like he went through a bout of depression. Mm -hmm. For right-wingers, being sad and being sad is a feminine thing. So it's quite surprising that he's admitting to being quite feminine. Ready to move the, to our, our DP to take it and show him my eyeball so you would see a 20-foot eye to see what Tim goes through to rip his heart out. Now, it's not like uh, this is what I want to experience any more than I want to get on a cross and have... Uh, my heart broken. I went through hypothermia. Uh, I had to have open heart surgery. I was electrocuted, struck by lightning. I understand the the, the, the necessity of what I was going to have to go through could help bring people back to God to wake them up. And so he like brought himself to near death to try to convince people that what like God exists or something. Because that sounds like he's just crazy. Quite frankly, more people now, Jordan, are more afraid of the devil than they are of God because they want a happy Jesus. And the problem is, is that eventually... Well, people are afraid of uh, Satan more than ever because they want to see Jesus happy. Like... That's pretty kind of insane to think that people fear a fictional being because they want to see another fictional being happy. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Why is that not, like, considered crazy? Why is this considered normal? Jordan, we all are going to die. Eventually, that that is going to happen. But people... The, the, the power of the devil deceives to say, no, no, you're going to be around for a long, long time. And, and no, and it's not Satan that convinces people that they're going to live a long life. It's just the desires of people because people want to live a long time and see stuff happen. It's not like, what, this guy thinks that God is like, oh, you're going to you're only going to leave for like 60, 70, 80 years, and then I'm going to murder you or something like Why is it that these like right-wing Christian religious nuts are so nutty? It's like, can't they stop being so crazy? And they never wake up. And eventually there is a judgment, and then you have to decide, or God decides, not how you want to see yourself anymore, but how God sees you. And how God sees you is who you really are. And so that's... Yeah, guys, because you can only live your life the way some fictional being dictates. Because that's how it can only be. You can't choose what you want to do in life. It's only 
the whims of some fictional beings that people like him interpret and want just to tell you how to act. If you want to be all whimsical and stuff, oh, that's evil. Because they claim their god doesn't like that. This is how I uh, uh, chose to, to go at this particular case. I had no choice but to go in. And I hear the screams in my heart. I hear the screams because of the agents that I got to work with. Got to show me... Okay, he's claiming he's hearing screams in his head. That means he needs therapy if he's hearing voices. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's pretty typical of people that, like, hear voices outside of their own head and stuff or inside their head or whatever. But if you're just on, like, a constant and you're hearing, like, nightmare screams or whatever, you should talk to a professional about that. Things and they one particular time he says, "Are you sure you want to go further?" But I was weeping so hard. I said, "This is what Tim goes through. This is what I got. I got to see it in order to go into there, to to take people to a level to, of will you do something? Will you do something? At some point, it ends for all of us." And so, the I'm curious if I missed something because I have no idea who this Tim dude he's talking about. Is he talking about himself or something? Because he could be, I mean, this dude is honestly, like, needs to be seeing several professionals at, like, the same time. The pain in my heart is much better than the pain in the future. And if I have to see that to save my children, to motivate me to save my niece, to tell my sister, no, walking home at thir 13 years old from school is not a good choice. Not a good choice, my sister says to me. No, I want my sister, my daughter, excuse me, to have the same kind of experience I have. And I said, no, not until this changes. You need to understand. So Anne, my sister, is a good, mo great mother, but she wasn't aware because... What is he ranting about at this moment? Because I am totally confused. The media that's supposed to do a good job to tell the truth... Well, they're going into that direction, which is, let's kind of twist it and change it and not talk about it. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like not material and having to play it out. How is this change? Um, slash Jordan YT. How has this changed you? How is, how is experiencing that material and having to play it out changed you? I, I, I'd give my life. In a heartbeat, changed me. I, I'm less concerned about myself than I am about the, the hurting. I I will tell you this right now. I would absolutely die if this if this were to change the world and get rid of trafficking and pornography and all of the, the eight arms of this octopus that has to be destroyed. The only way you can just what are they even talking about, like? This entire time, it's just been nothing but, like, random nonsense. And this is, like, how religious people are. They just talk about random nonsense, and they think they're, like, all coherent and stuff. Destroy this. Take the head out. If that hit, I'd give my life for it in a heartbeat.